What's Nottingham famous for? Well, not just Robin Hood, where we famously learned that you need painkillers if someone cuts your heart out with a spoon. Why a spoon, cousin? Why not an axe? Because it's dull, you twit. It'll hurt more. But also, it's famous for ibuprofen. That's right, let's go to Middle England over half a decade ago to meet a guy called Dr. Stuart Adams, who worked in the research department of the Boots Pure Drug Company. You know, Boots. <gasps> now, we already had aspirin, and I'll probably cover aspirin in another video. But after World War II, there was an appetite to improve on the efficacy of aspirin, which was a pretty good painkiller, but it, but it could be better. So in particular, rheumatoid arthritis was a condition that we really weren't on top of. And aspirin plus a steroid and sometimes some gold, that wasn't really cutting the mustard. Now a few companies were already operating in this field, megaliths like Merck and Pfizer had already made some good progress and the guys at Boots were at a bit of a disadvantage. Now I don't want to say that this is the story of the underdog plucky Brits, but this was their lab. Yes, a little house in the suburbs of Nottingham was where the magic happened. Boots had moved there during World War II to avoid the bombs, but this was hardly ideal. Adam's lab was in the front room, but as he did get better, in fairness, they gave him the kitchen in the larder as well. The way they started testing was to blast UV light at guinea pigs, because that causes a skin reaction, a bit like extreme sunburn. If you give a guinea pig aspirin, the rash, or erythema as it's known, is reduced. So that's the benchmark. A bunch of other compounds similar to aspirin were developed and given to guinea pigs and the rash compared. Over 1,500 compounds were tested and only a few were taken forward. The biggest win was the discover of phenoxy acid, which seemed to do really well. Although one of these was ibuprofen, the one they decided to run with was one called ibuphenac. And this was taken into clinical trials and seemed to be working until it started to cause some pretty bad liver toxicity in some patients. Weirdly though, that liver toxicity does not exist in Japanese people and nobody knows why. So ibuprofenac was actually used in Japan for a while, even after it stopped anywhere else. Pub quiz Japan knowledge for you there. So they went back to ibuprofen, which wasn't the most potent painkiller, but did seem to have the least side effects. Clinical trials were a success, patients with rheumatoid arthritis had stronger grip strength after taking the pills, and we had a winner! The biggest success though, especially for Boots, was successfully building the case that the drug should be allowed to be an over-the-counter medication rather than a prescribed only medication, a decision that is worth millions. So there we go, pretty cool, huh? And worth noting that Adams and his team didn't actually know how aspirin worked, and on prostaglandins, literally the targets of NSAIDs, they weren't even discovered until a decade after ibuprofen was on the market. So that's medicine for you, kids. You never know what you're gonna do. So there you go, ibuprofen, the most famous of NSAID drugs, designed by Boots, sold by Boots. So you can go to Boots, where you can buy Boots' own brand ibuprofen or Nurofen, which is actually a Boots ibuprofen. Both the same, except one costs 10 times as much. But hey, that's medicine. So until next time, see you later. Bye.